Good morning, my dear students. I welcome you all to Chapter 12, Plant Anatomy and Plant Physiology. Uh, so far, uh, I think four classes have been completed, in which we have learned about plant anatomy. We learned uh, dicot and monocot, root, stem, and leaves. Um, now we are entering into the second part of the lesson, where we are going to learn. Uh, plant physiology so there are many physiological functions taking place in plants like how we have a physiological functions in human beings like respiration digestion excretion locomotion etc we come across uh, many different types of uh, functions physiological functions vital functions taking place in plants in which uh, we are going to learn only two that is one photosynthesis and respiration in this lesson. First let me start with the photosynthesis followed by respiration. Photosynthesis. Photo plus synthesis is photosynthesis. Photo means light. Synthesis means production. That is production of uh, food that is starch with the help of sunlight is actually known as photosynthesis. Uh, and for this we need uh, various uh, uh, factors and if there is absence of even one factor, the process will not take place. You might have learned this in lower classes. The factors which includes one, sunlight. Second, chlorophyll pigment. Third, um, water. And four, carbon dioxide. So these are the main four factors without which photosynthesis cannot take place. So photosynthesis takes place in green plants. All kinds of green plants which contain chlorophyll pigment, they undergo photosynthesis. So it um, need not to be macro macroscopic plant, which also includes, that is photosynthesis takes place even in microorganisms like bacteria and algae. Certain bacteria and algae. So most of the algae they have chlorophyll pigment and some bacterium they have uh, chlorophyll pigment and so they are autotrophic in nature and they undergo photosynthesis. And moreover, the heterotrophic plant that is fungi, even though it is a plant, it lacks uh, uh, chlorophyll pigment and so photosynthesis will not take place. Okay. Uh, photosynthesis. Um, in, in photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is taken by the plant in the presence of sunlight it is uh, uh, um, by chlorophyll pigments this uh, energy from sunlight is converted into uh, starch that is solar energy is converted into chemical energy that is the energy from the sunlight uh, uh, which is used to uh, prepare starch and this takes place in chloroplasts by chlorophyll pigments and uh, during this process since carbon dioxide is taken in oxygen is released so far you might have learned that plants are aerobic in nature that is they consume oxygen like us but here we are learning that plants consume carbon dioxide so this is mainly uh, the reason is the main reason is it is just to uh, get carbon so uh, plants consume uh, carbon dioxide for carbon and this carbon is used in the formation of glucose that is C6H12O6 where carbon is obtained from carbon dioxide 
and H12O6 that is hydrogen and oxygen are obtained from water. So this is why I said uh, the five four factors that are necessary or important for photosynthesis which includes again I repeat sunlight, chlorophyll pigment, carbon dioxide and water. So carbon dioxide water which becomes glucose C6H12O6 carbon obtained from carbon dioxide and H hydrogen and oxygen obtained from water. Uh, for this process there should be an initiation which is done by sunlight I mean the energy that is found in sunlight and this all takes place in a site which is none other than chloroplast okay which produces chlorophyll pigment. Plastids which is an important organelle found only in plants and not in animals. Plastids are important organelle which is found only in plants and not in animals. Maybe in lower classes you might have learned that uh, there are certain characteristics of plant cell and the characteristics of animal cell. That is, cell wall is found only in plant cell and not in animal cell. Plastids are found only in plant cell and not in animal cell. Then, then large vacuoles are found in plant cell whereas a small, the vacuoles will be smaller in animal cell. Uh, centrosomes are found only in animal cell and not in plant cell. So like that we have learned the difference between a plant cell and animal cell may be in 8th standard. So in that plastids which are found only in uh, plant cell and not in animal cell. And there are three types of plastids which includes chloroplast, chromoplast and lycoplast. Chlorophyll pigment. Um, the first one is chloroplast. Uh, chloroplast which produces chlorophyll pigments and this chlorophyll pigments give greenish color to the plants. Uh, mainly leaves are greenish in color because of chlorophyll pigment. The tender part of the stem that when you uh, look into a young plant the tender stem will be greenish in color and that is because that is also because of uh, the presence of chlorophyll pigment of chloroplast uh, and uh, based on our physiological function this chlorophyll is important for photosynthesis. There are different types of pigments produced by chromoplast for example uh, xanthophyll, uh, anthocyanin then carotene. So these are some few examples of pigments that are produced by this chromoplast. So each pigment gives a color. For example the color of the carrot is because of that uh, beta carotene which gives that uh, orange color. Uh, similarly you have the color of the tomato or color of uh, certain yellowish fruits. So each pigment gives a color. Okay. Then third one is uh, leucoplast. Even in leucoplast you have some uh, types like uh, amyloplast, proteinoplast but here there is no coloration. For example the color of the roots it will, will, will be actually brownish in color if you wash or remove, peel out the outer layer of the root in, internally you will find a white color and that is because of lycoplast. Okay, I hope you understand. So chloroplast uh, which gives greenish color alone. The remaining colors, various different colors are given by chromoplast and uh, leucoplast which gives white or colorless. Okay. Uh, yes, so this is the structure of a chloroplast, uh, which is an important organelle that is uh, found in plant cell and uh, that is involved in the uh, production of chlorophyll pigment. Okay. Chloroplast is uh, a oval shaped structure. So, chloroplast is an oval shaped structure. Uh, the diameter is about 2 to 10 micrometers. The diameter of a chloroplast is about 2 to 10 micrometers and its thickness is about 1 to 2 micrometers. Okay. Uh, it consists of uh, the following parts which include uh, envelope, outer envelope, then inside there is a matrix known as stroma, then third one is thylakoids and grana. So these are the four parts of a uh, chloroplast. Again I repeat envelope inside you have uh, stroma and in stroma you have uh, a pile of uh, structures 
disc like structures known as thylakoids which consists of grana so these are the four structures of chloroplast uh, first is envelope so envelope is a double membranous with an outer and an inner membrane so if you look into this diagram you can find it is double membranous in nature which consists of an outer and an inner membrane so two membranes are there which are separated by an inter membrane space so there is a space in between these two and that is known as inter membrane space the next is the matrix that is present inside the envelope okay so outer envelope inner envelope so inner to that you have a granular structure and that is known as stroma which contains dna 70s ribosomes and other molecules that are required for uh, protein synthesis the third part of chloroplast is thylakoid so actually the thylakoids which are made up of disc like structures known as grana so each disc like structure is known as grana a pile of or a collection of this grana is actually known as thylakoid the thylakoid consists of a thylakoid membrane so it consists of a thylakoid membrane which encloses thylakoid lumen okay so these are the two parts of thylakoids thylakoids are uh, as i said before it is made up of uh many grana which are placed one above the other okay each structure each disc like structure is known as grana so these grana are interconnected to each other by membranous lamellae called fret channels okay so each grana they are interconnected by a channel known as fret lamellae or fret channels or intergrana lamellae so these are the other name names of fret channels they are known as fret channels or intergrana lamellae or fret lamellae functions of chloroplast so there are some few functions of chloroplast which includes one uh, photosynthesis photosynthesis is because of chloroplast second one is uh, this chloroplast is uh, responsible for storage of starch in the plant then third one is it uh, initiates the synthesis of fatty acids like how it uh, involved in the production of starch It, the chloroplast is also involved in the synthesis of uh, fatty acids and also storage of lipids okay so lipids and another than fats okay Fa lipids are a kind of fats okay and finally a chloroplast uh, is involved in the formation of another chloroplast so these are the various functions of chloroplast one photosynthesis second it uh, it is a uh, uh, mainly responsible for storage of starch then third synthesis of fatty acids then storage of lipids and finally for the formation of chloroplast these are the various and simple functions of chloroplast the next is photosynthetic pigments even though there are different types of pigments like xanthophyll anthocyanin uh, proteinoplast uh, aminoplast okay chlorophyll etc even though there are different types of pigments there are certain pigments which are involved in uh, photosynthesis and those pigments are uh, alone th those alone are, are known as photosynthetic pigments the pigments that are involved in photosynthesis are known as photosynthetic pigments so this can be classified into two that is one primary pigment and secondary pigment together this primary and secondary they are together called as photosynthesis okay <coughs> photosynthetic pigments in that you have two types uh, primary and secondary together both primary and secondary are known as photosystem the primary pigments which is none other than chlorophyll a chlorophyll a is actually known as primary pigment whereas chlorophyll b chlorophyll c chlorophyll d and carotenoids together they are known as secondary pigments okay primary pigment chlorophyll a chlorophyll b c d and carotenoids are known as um, secondary pigments so this primary pigment they are also known as reaction center because the main reaction takes place and that's why they are primary whereas um, secondary pigment is otherwise known as harvesting center so there reaction takes place what is the reaction that is uh, uh, the chlorophyll a is involved in trapping or uh, Uh, absorbing the so solar energy that is light energy and converts it into chemical energy that is the main function of photosynthesis that is what photosynthesis okay so hence uh, only they are known as primary pigments 
and uh, during this process certain energy is released okay or the remaining energy from the sunlight which is absorbed by secondary pigments and that uh, those uh, energy are again resend or given to given back to uh, primary pigment okay primary pigment uh, absorbs or traps the solar energy and converts that light energy into el chemical energy that is starch okay the food whereas some energy that is obtained in uh, uh, reaction center is a, is collected by the secondary pigments and in turn they give the those energy to primary pigment so this is the function of uh, primary and secondary pigments okay so hence uh, a primary pigment is known as reaction center and a secondary pigment is known as harvesting center the next topic is photosynthesis so we have two kinds of photosynthesis which you might have learned in lower classes one is light dependent reaction and light independent reaction this can also be called as light reaction and dark reaction and the other name is hill reaction and calvin cycle so like that uh, there are many names for these two kinds of photosynthesis that is the reaction that depends on light if there is no light the process will not take place so light is necessary that kind that part of the reaction is known as light dependent reaction whereas the the second second reaction which is followed by light dependent where uh, it, it need not uh, the presence of light so that is known as dark reaction or light independent reaction whether there is light or not the process may take place and so it is known as dark reaction or light independent reaction okay light dependent reaction and light independent reaction light dependent reaction depends on the light and light independent reaction it it does not need the presence of light so it may or may not take place in the light in the presence or absence of light okay so this light reaction which was discovered by robin hill uh, hence it is known as hill reaction whereas a da dark reaction which was uh, discovered by melvin calvin and so it is known as calvin reaction in case of light reaction the light energy is absorbed so it takes place in the night, light time that is day time so light energy is absorbed during that process and the light energy is converted into chemical energy that is atp adp nad nadp fad etc so there are various forms of energies the main is atp because it is the energy rich molecule that is adenosine triphosphate we also have other forms of energy like adp okay atp adenosine triphosphate adp adenosine diphosphate then we have nad and fad nad is nicotinamine dinucleotide and fad flavin amide dinucleotide am i right am i right flavian okay so like that we have different types of energy uh, so um, the energy rich is atp okay so triphosphate that is there will be three phosphate molecules but in other uh, adp adp where you will have only two phosphate molecules and that way it is, that's why it is known as diphosphate and again in nad and fad we have nadh2 and fadh2 so uh, we have different molecules of energy but uh, in all cases we learn only about atp since it is energy rich that will be produced more and that uh, involved in the other reactions okay right so again come back uh, in light dependent reaction uh, in light dependent reaction uh, the li the light energy is converted into these forms of energies that is you call it as chemical energy in light independent reaction the energy that is obtained from this light reaction that is i said atp adp okay so all those energies are utilized and uh, in this uh, process the carbon dioxide is converted into starch i hope now you can understand during day time uh, light uh, energy is converted into uh, a, a different forms of energy especially atp molecules and during night time these atp molecules are utilized or involved to convert carbon dioxide and water into uh, carbohydrates that is starch so the full process that is you might have, you, you know this uh, chemical reaction of photosynthesis where 
carbon dioxide plus water gives glucose plus oxygen. It happens in two stages that is during daytime light energy is converted into ATP molecules and during night time those ATP molecules are used for the conversion of carbon dioxide and water into carbohydrates. So this is how you have this light reaction and dark reaction and uh, maybe in lower classes you might have learned this thing that is uh, during daytime uh, tree consumes carbon dioxide okay and releases oxygen and this is mainly for uh, for the production of glucose or starch that is C6H12O6 that carbon is obtained from those carbon dioxide whereas in night time it respires like us that is it takes oxygen and gives out carbon dioxide. So you can come across two types of reaction light reaction and dark reaction also known as light dependent reaction and light independent reaction. This is a very simple question okay uh, where uh, uh, you can easily memorize, recall and write the answer and also this is also an important question. The next is the factors that affect photosynthesis. So we have different types of factors that can be classified into internal factors and external factors. Internal factors that is which are found in the plant are known as internal factors and those which are found or present in the environment are known as external factors. Uh, they may initiate or suppress the photosynthesis. I hope you understand what is in way initiation or suppression. For example, internal factors which includes the pigments that are found in the plant, the leaf age, okay, the accumulation of carbohydrates and hormones. These are the internal factors which uh, controls the uh, photosynthesis process. First, uh, pigments. So the presence of pigments, if there are more pigments, which means it initiates the photosynthesis process. If there is lack of pigments, automatically, I hope you know, the photosynthesis process will be delayed or it will be lagging. Uh, in this condition, I could say one thing that is chlorosis. There is an infection known as chlorosis, okay, where uh, due to the infection of a bacteria or other organism, it results in the destruction of photosynthetic pigments that is chlorophyll pigments and uh, the leaf turns into yellowish in color and this condition is known as chlorophyll. So in this condition since the pigments are lost which means it uh, decreases the um, rate of photosynthesis. I hope now you can understand. Okay. Then second is leaf age. Again when the leaf uh, attains age that is in the sense it, when it becomes old, older slowly the pigments will be lost and it will be ready to fall down it turns into brownish color and withers and during this condition do you expect photosynthesis in the leaf no so aging also results in the lack of photosynthesis then third one is accumulation of carbohydrates so the more the carbohydrates are found in the leaf which means the photosynthesis will be delayed so we have a certain hormones for those which controls everything Okay, like how we have uh, this uh, sense of uh, thirst, sense of uh, hunger, okay, etc. So based on that, you eat something, you drink water. But similarly, in, in uh, plants, we have hormones that controls uh, the uh, or maintains the amount of carbohydrates. So when the carbohydrates accumulation is more, when there is more amount of starch or glucose, which means the photosynthesis will be delayed or lagging. Then finally, hormones. So hormones play a, play a major role not only in humans even in plants. We will learn this in another lesson uh, where it initiates as well as it suppresses. That is we have certain hormones which initiates a process. It may be growth or it may be ripening or formation of uh, vegetable, formation of flower or fertilization etc. Everything for everything we have certain hormones to initiate. Similarly we have certain other hormones to suppress these processes. Okay, so hormones also play a major role. So let me repeat the uh, internal factors. One, pigments. Second, leaf aging. Third one is accumulation of carbohydrates. And fourth one is hormones. Similarly, when it comes to external factors, which includes the presence of light, the presence of amount of carbon dioxide, temperature, water and the mineral elements. So usually when you say uh, the factors that are responsible for photosynthesis, we stop with the four that is uh, chlorophyll, sunlight, carbon dioxide and water. 
So actually there is one more that is minerals which actually uh, which is also an important factor for photosynthesis which is described in this external factor. Minerals are similar to vitamins. I hope you know you might have learned in lower classes where uh, vitamins are uh, protective foods. Okay, so in that way minerals are also uh, needed for all kinds of living organisms. Okay, um, for one example is since you have learned nervous system I would say where a potassium ion which is responsible for the transfer of the nerve impulse. Okay, so you have two kinds of nerve impulse electrical impulse and chemical impulse and that uh, electrical impulse is because of this potassium ions. So potassium is a mineral. I just said one example. So in that way uh, minerals are needed for uh, many physiological functions that is taking place in your body. Similarly even in plants minerals are very 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 essential. Okay. So in that way we have uh, this mineral elements which is also needed an, uh, an external factor which is very much necessary for plants especially for photosynthesis and apart from that we have carbon dioxide and water okay so because this carbon dioxide and water is converted into um, C6 H12O6 okay that is glucose so if there is lack of carbon dioxide or lack of water which means the process will not take place okay even other factors are present we this is the raw material I hope you know what is in the raw material where this carbon dioxide becomes glucose water becomes glucose if that raw material is absent okay so which means the process will not take place it's like uh, uh, make cooking something without vegetables without rice okay so the, the rice vegetable are uh, raw materials without which we cannot cook uh, any food so like that here uh, carbon dioxide water are raw materials so they are given as external factors similarly light I hope you know the process will not take place without light energy <coughs> Only light energy is converted into chemical energy. If there is no light energy, nothing going on. Okay, so light energy is like uh, the gas stove. I mean, sorry, the LPG. Okay, so without uh, that uh, flame or without that heat, you cannot cook. Like that here, light energy is the promoter or the initiator of the whole process. If there is no energy, I mean light energy, nothing may take place. And uh, finally, temperature. Temperature plays a major role. Uh, in this uh, process so temperature that is if there is very high temperature you will find more water evaporating which means uh, the plant lacks water process may uh, disturb similarly when there is very uh, less uh, temperature uh, freezing temperature even in that case you may the pro process will be affected so we need a moderate temperature such that the process takes place uh, in normal okay so uh, let me repeat the various external factors which includes light, carbon dioxide, temperature, water and minerals. So you have four uh, internal factors and five external factors which uh, play a major role in the affect or effect that is in the increase or decrease of the photosynthetic process. The next physiological function that we are going to learn in this uh, lesson is respiration what we learned before is photosynthesis and another important function is respiration uh, by this time you should be knowing about this respiration uh, this respiration is none other than the exchange of gases with the environment the exchange of gases of an organism with the environment is known as respiration there are two kinds of respiration that is internal respiration and external respiration. The respiration that uh, mere exchange of gases, uh, for example, uh, oxygen is taken and carbon dioxide is thrown out to the environment is known as external respiration because uh, here the gas does not enter into the cell. It uh, merely enters into the body of a plant or an animal, but it does not enter into the cell and so it is known as external respiration. Whereas internal respiration where the gas enters into the cell and some chemical process, biochemical process takes place and so this is known as internal respiration or cellular respiration. Okay, internal respiration or cellular respiration. So these are the two kinds of respiration. External respiration is a mere physical process. 
where ox uh, the gas goes inside and comes out that's all okay but internal respiration since it takes place inside a cell a chemical reaction taking place inside a cell it is also known as biochemical process again i repeat external respiration is a physical process whereas internal respiration is a biochemical process this cellular respiration is of two kinds namely aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration the respiration that takes place in the presence of oxygen is known as aerobic respiration the respiration that takes place in the absence of oxygen is known as anaerobic respiration like how we had a light dependent and light independent like that i can say oxygen dependent oxygen independent uh, aerobic respiration is oxygen dependent if there is no oxygen the respiration will not take place similarly anaerobic respiration it does not need oxygen it it doesn't mean it needs carbon dioxide but the fact is it does not need oxygen so which means it depends on some other gases so that is the main difference between a uh, aerobic respiration and an anaerobic respiration second <clears throat> in aerobic respiration takes place in most of the organisms that living organisms that are found in the earth whereas only in few microorganisms and uh, certain stages of plants for example when there is germination of seed anaerobic respiration takes place then third the difference between aerobic and anaerobic in aerobic respiration complete oxidation takes place whereas in anaerobic respiration incomplete oxidation takes place and because of this in aerobic respiration more amount of atps are produced whereas in anaerobic respiration very less amount of atp molecules are produced okay so aerobic respiration is oxygen dependent anaerobic respiration is oxygen independent this is the first point aerobic respiration takes place in most of the living organisms anaerobic respiration takes place only in few microorganisms and this during seed germination in aerobic respiration complete oxidation takes place whereas in anaerobic respiration incomplete that is it is not a complete process uh, that is in aerobic respiration the glucose molecules breaks into minerals that is carbon dioxide water and energy that is complete but in anaerobic respiration the glucose molecule it breaks into an alcohol again you have an organic substance which can be further divided into or broken down into and hence it is known as an incomplete process okay so in uh, aerobic respiration since a complete oxidation takes place more amount of atp molecules are produced compared to anaerobic respiration where less amount of atp molecules are produced then finally the e um, process that is in aerobic respiration glucose breaks into carbon dioxide water and energy whereas in anaerobic respiration it is of different ways for example uh, if it is the if the gluc instead of <coughs> for example if it is uh, lactose in milk the lactose is converted into lactic acid i hope by this time you can understand anaerobic respiration is none other than fermentation which you have learned in lower classes lactose converted into lactic acid plus energy similarly in some cases so this uh, is uh, um, <coughs> this process is done by uh, lactobacillus in milk curdling of milk milk is converted into curd lactose is converted into lactic acid another example uh, uh, where uh, uh, glucose is converted into alcohol mostly ethyl ethyl, ethyl alcohol or ethanol okay scientific iupac name is ethyl iupac name is ethanol and common name is uh, ethyl alcohol like how we have in biology uh, scientific names and vernacular names that is common names like that in uh, chemistry we have uh, common names and iupac names especially for organic chemistry okay so ethyl alcohol is the uh, common name of ethanol okay ethanol is the iupac name iupac that is i u p a c international union of pure and applied chemistry so like how we have uh, this uh, scientific name in chemistry it is known as iupac name okay Uh, so here you come across this glucose converted into ethanol plus energy 
So ethanol is an organic compound. Lactic acid is an organic compound and hence we call this as an incomplete oxidation. Okay. So these are the difference between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. The next is uh, structure of mitochondria. Uh, singular is mitochondrion and plural is mitochondria. Mitochondria are known as energy currency of the cell or it is also known as powerhouse of the cell. It is filamentous or granular uh, organelle present in eukaryotic cells and absent in prokaryotic cells. It was first discovered by Adolf Albert von Kolliker. Shortly in the book it is known as Kolliker. Uh, in 1857, uh, uh, this uh, mitochondrion has many names like energy currency of the cell or powerhouse of the cell or ATP factory of the cell. Okay. The size of the mitochondrion is about 0.5 micrometer to 2 micrometer and it contains 60 to 70 percent protein, 25 to 30 percent lipid, 5 to 7 percent RNA and small amount of DNA and minerals. The structure of mitochondrion, uh, even here like how we had uh, in chloroplast, here also we have an uh, envelope which is made up of outer membrane and the inner membrane. Okay, the envelope. So this is a closed structure and here they have opened and shown what is the inside. Okay, so the envelope which uh, covers the mitochondrion is made up of two membranes namely the outer membrane and the inner membrane. The outer membrane is smooth, freely permeable uh, to most of the small molecules. It contains enzymes, proteins and lipids. It has a pro po porine molecules which are made up of proteins and that forms the channel for passage of molecules through it. Whereas the inner molecule is semi permeable in nature. So outer molecule is fully permeable which means it allows everything to go inside but inner membrane it is semi permeable that is which allows only certain substances and not all the substance to enter into that. And it regulates the passage of materials. This semi permeable membrane that is inner membrane it regulates the passage of materials from in and out of mitochondria. They are rich, the inner membrane is rich in enzymes and uh, certain carrier proteins and it consists of 80% of proteins and lipids. Okay, then the next structure is known as cristae. So what you find inside is known as cristae uh, which is almost irregular in shape. Uh, this cristae can be called as a finger like projections like how we have a villi in the intestine. You come across this cristae in the form of finger like projections. Okay. Uh, this uh, forms, this is connected to the inner mitochondrial membrane. Okay, so outer membrane, in the inner membrane where you come across cristae. Okay, uh, these cristae increase the surface area of the mitochondrion, that is the inner surface of the mitochondrion. So, even villi in intestine, actually, what, what, why it is found? Because it increases the surface area of uh, uh, intestine such that more digestion takes place like that here uh, this uh, structures since they are uh, bent and form finger like projections uh, you come across uh, more amount of oxidation taking place in mitochondria. Um, this oxisomes so which are found in this uh, crista they are known as oxisomes they are minute regularly spaced tennis racket shaped particles okay. Uh, they are involved in ATP synthesis. So, these oxisomes are otherwise known as F1 particles. So, here, here in the next picture you can find small stick like, mat stick like structures. So, they are actually known as oxisomes which are found actually in the cristae. So, cristae is finger like projection on which you find this uh, oxisomes which are also known as F1 particles and these F1 particles are involved in the synthesis of ATP. The next comes mitochondrial matrix. So, inner to this finger like structures you come across mitochondrial matrix. Uh, these are all complex mixture of proteins and lipids. They contain enzymes which are needed for Krebs cycle and they also contain mitochondrial ribosomes and transfer RNAs. So, there are three types of RNA as messenger RNA, ribosomal RNA and transfer RNA. So, this tRNAs that is the transfer RNAs are found in the mitochondrial matrix. The next is functions of mitochondria. The main function of mitochondria is respiration because they, uh, by respiration they produce large number of ATP molecules. Uh, mitochondria also help in maintaining normal concentration of calcium ions. So, this is something new. 
uh, which you have not learned so far okay in any of your lower classes that is it maintains the concentration of calcium ions and the third one is it also regulates the metabolic activity of the cell so these are the three main functions of mitochondria one respiration that is cellular respiration second is uh, maintaining normal concentration of calcium ions and third one is it regulates regulates means controls okay it controls the metabolic activity of the cell the process of aerobic respiration so there are some three important stages of aerobic respiration actually in this year you are going to learn in brief manner uh, where when you go to higher secondary or college you will learn the same in a very elaborate manner okay so the three stages of aerobic respiration includes glycolysis krebs cycle and the electron transport chain glycolysis it's in the name that glucose splits that is known as lysis lysis means splitting or breakdown uh, glyco that is glucose in this first step glycolysis glucose splits into two molecules of pyruvic acid that is one molecule of glucose breaks into two molecules of pyruvic acid and this takes place in cytoplasm so this is known as glycolysis which happens both in aerobic and anaerobic respiration the second uh, stage is krebs cycle which is also known as tricarboxylic acid cycle uh, this occurs in the mitochondrial matrix here the two molecules of pyruvic acid that is obtained by glycolysis it enters into mitochondria and uh, it breaks into carbon dioxide and water so this is krebs cycle the third is electron transport chain which is also known as oxidative phosphorylation uh, this letc that is electron transport chain it occurs in an, uh, a system it uh, i mean it it is accomplished through a system of electron carrier complex this you might have learned uh, maybe 9 standard or so uh, where uh, in an atom the electrons uh, from ground state it goes to the excited state again it comes back to the normal ground state where uh, in, with a more amount of release of energy so this this like of uh, process takes place in electron transport chain and it is located on the inner membrane of the mitochondria okay so the etc happens in the uh, takes place in the inner membrane of the mitochondria uh, nadh2 and fadh2 are converted to nad plus and fad plus in the presence of oxygen to release energy and these uh, energy are utilized for the formation of adp into atp that is the energy from this uh, conversion uh, is used in the conversion of adp to atp so already i have said uh, atp is the uh, richest source of energy so what you can understand from this all the uh, other uh, forms of energy are converted into the richest source or the richest form that is atp oxygen is the ultimate acceptor of electrons which uh, which gets reduced to water so this is the uh, process that takes place in etc that is electron transport chain the final topic is respiratory quotient respiratory quotient is the ratio of volume of carbon dioxide liberated to the volume of oxygen consumed during respiration that is the the volume that you have sent out that is liberated uh, you compare that to the volume of oxygen consumed and that is actually known as respiratory quotient there is a formula for this respiratory quotient that, that is rq is equal to volume of carbon dioxide liberated divided by volume of oxygen consumed very simple two mark answers so read thoroughly okay so uh, with this our lesson comes to an end we'll finish uh, we are finishing after a long uh, time duration we are finishing this uh, first lesson lesson 12 plant anatomy and plant physiology uh, now assignment time so what you are going to do is that uh, you write uh, I mean you take a page in your notebook uh, draw a tabular column and write one the difference between light dependent and light independent reaction and the second you write the difference between um, aerobic and anaerobic re uh, processes aerobic and anaerobic respiration okay so I don't need in sentences I want in hints okay so in like hints for example aerobic respiration uh, it takes place in the presence of oxygen and anaerobic respiration takes place in the absence of oxygen 
complete oxidation takes place incomplete oxidation then uh, more atps are produced less atp so like that you understand the concept and write in the form of hints i hope you know what is meant by hint which is not in a complete sentence but still it gives a, a meaning okay so like that you write in hints um in a tabular con okay so maybe you just dedicate a full page for that half page for light dependent light independent reaction and half page for uh, aerobic and anaerobic reaction so this is your assignment today uh, plan it out and write neatly in your notebook okay thank you meet you in another lesson some other day bye take care